here's a little exercise in composition, thinking about background, middle ground and foreground, connecting also the different elements of your composition. And I'm going to cover various watercolour techniques. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter and providing tutorial videos up here on YouTube. So thanks very much for joining me, joining me on this demo. This is the River Avon near Bristol. And obviously I'm, I'm on one side of the bank, looking over to the other side of the bank, looking in a sort of westerly, southwesterly direction, sunny day. River sort of in the foreground. There, there, there's just a little tiny bit of the, my, the immediate bank on my side, just showing through there on the left-hand side, some brambles or something there showing through. And, and then on the other side, we've got some weeds and foliage growing there on that far bank. Then just beyond that, we've got a lovely row of cows, different lights and darks just being, being picked up there against the background of the the, uh, the luscious green growth of the grass over there on that pasture. And then in the immediate background, a row of simple trees and then the sky. Top left corner, top left corner, we've got a tree there on the bank. Top right corner, we've got, uh, there's another tree on the bank and then a little bit of overhanging foliage on the right hand side. So I'm going to go through this demo, complete process, start to finish with my outline drawing and then using various different watercolour techniques. I will do a critique at the end, try and be fairly hard on myself and uh, just try and explain what went right, what went, what I think went wrong. I hope you like it and let's get to it. I'm using and recommend Saunders Waterford Cold Press 300 grams paper. This is 15 inches across by 11 inches down. I'll cover my paints as I go through the demo, but they're, they're handmade paints from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. First step, fairly simple drawing, getting in those mainly horizontal bands of the composition, starting with the top edge of the trees, the base of those trees. I'm just lightly touching the paper with my soft pencil, just so that I've got some guidelines to go go with. That's that tree, left hand tree, that's stuck in the bank on the far side. Then the river bank on the far side, maybe a few little larger, more significant bushes on the far side of the bank. Again, just a few little dotted lines, dots and dashes, just to denote that side. With this side of the bank, I think it's important to get in some context of the bank, this side. So bottom left corner, I'm thinking, compared to the photo, just extend it out a little bit from my source photo, just extend the, the height of the, the foliage there, and also connect some of the, some of the plants, some of the, the growth, with the far side, just as some connection, rather than, rather than just these sort of horizontal bands going up, going up the, going up the composition, going up the scene, and the importance of also some verticals, also left hand side, right hand side, with those tree trunks, and that's pretty much it on the drawing, getting in those, let's say, the main shapes, the main objects. I haven't even bothered to really draw in those cows. I'm going to try and depict those just by a little bit of negative painting around the shapes in the middle of that uh, pasture, the field on the on the far side, and a little bit of the, the dark markings for them as well. I want a fairly soft sky and transition to the edge of the tree. So I've dampened the paper first of all. I'm using a Raphael soft aqua mop brush. 
Now, let me describe my palette to you. As I said, I'm using handmade watercolour paints, quality professional paints from Mark Jackman, Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. And the colours I've got, they, well, they don't change from demo to demo. Excuse my dirty palette. But from the top, I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, which I'm going to be using a lot of for the grass, particularly in the field on the far side. Then I've got viridian green. Now, viridian green with one of those browns does make a very good dark green for foliage of trees, I think. Uh, and you can see me there mixing that, that um, spring green with the viridian green. Then below that I've got cobalt green. Sometimes it's cobalt turquoise. I think this was cobalt green. And then cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. And after ultramarine blue, we've got cadmium, sorry, Alison crimson, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, and cadmium yellow, just lurking a little bit lower down uh, on the very at the very bottom. So these are the background trees. I will go in a little bit darker than this. I'm really just trying to cover up most of the paper at this stage. This brush is a number four in size. Here's the grass going in, a bit more vibrant. Add, so to go stronger than that, to go stronger than that spring green, or go a little bit more vibrant, I've added a, a tiny bit of cadmium yellow to it. It's important to try and alternate some of the intensity of the green as I go over. So it's not too um, flat or continuous that, that shade. I need to just subtly introduce different different values, different shades of green and the saturation of, of the pigment as I go over. And I've left a little bit of the paper showing there. That could be some of the cows, a little herd of the cows, use my fingertip to lift off and just merge in some of the paint. It is quite dry, the atmosphere, as I'm painting this. So the paint is drying quite quickly and therefore I do need to work fairly swiftly. Now Saunders, Saunders Woodford watercolour paper, is really good at keeping fairly damp for a long time. So as long as it's not too dry, you've got enough time to work with watercolour. And when you're applying different layers, you don't get that nasty overlapping line between a lighter colour and a darker colour, a lighter value and a, a darker value. The river is going in a little bit darker than the sky. And with my brush marks and brush stroke directions, I'm just trying to not make the water surface look too smooth and also give the impression of some of the soft edges of the reflections of the clouds above. So darker and essentially softer edges, all right, in, in the marks that I'm making. Going a tiny bit darker towards the near side here and then leave out that bottom left corner and the bottom right corner for a little bit more green. Similar brush marks, brush brush strokes, fairly haphazard direction. Again, alter the 
strength of the green, pick up a bit of cadmium yellow. Doesn't matter when, with this green mixing with a little bit of the blue, it's just gonna go a little bit darker, just a tiny bit darker, which doesn't matter. I'm not going to wait too long now before going in and adding in a darker background for the trees then that's going to well not too dark but that's going to give me a, a little bit more sense of depth and, and the background in that we've got the light sky then a, then a darker band of the trees and then the lighter field just in front of that around the cows then I'm going to gradually Working from the background, work my way forwards on this painting. I use a slightly smaller brush for this, which I tend to do when I'm painting. Start with as big a brush as possible in relation to the size of the paper. And then as I progress, using smaller size brushes. So this is still a Raphael and Raphael Soft Aqua synthetic mop brush and this is a size two. Starting from the left hand side, this is compared to what I was painting with before, this is less water to paint ratio and I'm just trying to create the look of those trees in the background with particularly the edge. Try not to make them look too perfect with that sort of round shape of a tree, a little bit nat more natural looking with the edge of those trees. A tiny bit of the sky showing through as well and different different values, different shades of green. I can use the side of my brush here, starting from the outside of the canopy and a little bit drier. I tend to, when I'm using a stroke like this, have less paint on the brush and drag down, using the side of the brush, drag down from the, from the outside of the canopy into the middle of the tree. So I'm still getting that sort of circular shape. As I'm going over to the right, the row of trees, that they are receding into the distance. So I'm going a little bit lighter and a little bit cooler there. Towards the base of the trees, it gets darker and we're going to get that nice dark contrast, the, the contrast between the base of the trees and the lighter colour of the field. And I can see that the paper is drying quite rapidly. So I need to work as quickly as possible so that I don't get too many hard edges appearing in within the trees where I've gone from the a lighter green to a darker valley like this blue. I'm using a a, a cool a cooler blue, a bit of a cobalt blue here for the shadow of the trees. If I want to go a bit darker neutral tint, or I could use Payne's Grey. Not too much water. And also the edge here is, I've got to think about the, the tall grasses and the shrubs and bits of foliage growing at the other end of the field, just before it hits the base of the tree. So again, a little bit of an organic edge to the, the end the edge of the field on that far side. Darker still, go back into the canopy with some of that dark paint. If I've put a mark in there and the edge is too hard, then I'll quickly lift it off with the fingertip. It's still a little bit damp, those trees, so I, I do have a bit of extra time to add darker, thicker paint into it. So, 
a little bit of a, a darker edge base of those trees. Now that might be a little bit too dark. Things are going to dry a little bit lighter, but that's not always the case when you're using neutral tint. When you go in with some quite strong neutral tint, then the value sort of stays as it is. You'll have to excuse the fly flying around. I'm painting this in the evening and uh, the little fly is attracted by my light. A few more darker patches in the canopy just to show up. I'm trying to create also the shape of all the different trees mingling and merging in with each other where where the shadow of one tree then then is contrast against the light hitting a tree just just next to it the sun is on this day the sun was coming from the top right corner just to let you know to give you some context to where the light the light's coming from smaller brush still the far side of the river and the bank. Smaller brush and less water, not too much water in this. Connecting again the shadow of the far side of the bank to the background trees, which is important, just so that it's not too... There's, as I said earlier, there's not too many of these very rigid bands, horizontal bands going across. There's some connection with these verticals, whether it's trunks and little bits of foliage and shrubs and so on. A little bit of green just to escape my palette. I'm starting to define just a little bit of, in the middle of the field, the herd of cows in there, almost in a, they're almost in a long line, but there was, a, on that left-hand third, there was a, a larger group on that side. Down to the water's edge with this darker, thicker green dry brush. All right, so with this smaller, this is a small synthetic round brush, size eight, I believe. Size eight and creating the that far side of the bank. The, because the light is coming towards us a little bit, it's in the top right corner, coming towards a little bit, it is quite dark at the base of the, the river bank on that side. And then, a, <coughs> excuse me, and then a sort of softer transition into a bit of the reflections on that far side. Continue along, try and get a jagged edge to the waterline, not too straight. Keep it fairly, keep it as natural looking as I can. Over on the right hand side here, there are some larger bushes. It's actually a little bit of fun using brush marks like this and the, the, the hairs of the brush, they sort of splay out and you get some, sometimes some quite nice shapes. And over on the right hand side, I don't want to be too detailed. The focal point should be 
that this sort of channel of water in the middle and then the eyes hopefully go up and over the bank and they spot uh, the, the impression of these cows in the distance. I'm now adding in a bit of a darker line, a dark, darker water's edge to that far side. Gradually going along left to right because I'm right-handed. And now for the start of some of the water reflections, I'm using a different brush again. This is a soft brush. I'm trying to use a, a softer brush as I can for this because I don't want to damage or destroy the blue, the, the, the layer of blue that I've got in there already. So as soft a brush as possible, a, a soft, this is a soft squirrel mop brush, bit of negative painting as I come down to the foreground, that, that corner of the foreground. This darker green is really the reflection of that far bank and it doesn't matter if there's a few little slithers of, of blue showing through but fairly wet mixture as I go up to the dark of the far bank that's still a little bit it's not totally dry so I do get a an ever so subtle softness to it as that darker shadow just mixes with some of this green. Now you can see there, it just sort of came down as a few little millimeters, which just makes all the difference to have that smooth transition from one to the other. With these brush marks, I'm trying to create the impression also of some ripples over the water. The, the river here is not flowing very fast. It's sort of meandering around. It sort of snakes around, uh, around large bends in the, in the river. The flow of the water is going around large bends. So it's, there's a little bit of movement, maybe a little bit of wind is, is disturbing the surface. So leaving a few lines there at a slightly different angle just to just to try and show that that movement as this is still damp and you can see a little bit of a a glistening on the surface it's still quite damp because it was a lot watery than what i've been using before going in now with a darker value really a dark brown i think and just let that just going with a, a, a thicker this is a thicker consistency just going in in a few places here to get that real softness. I need to work quite quickly from left to right. And then just let the watercolour doing what it's doing. I might just drag the brush down a few vertical marks just to, there are just a few little verticals just to, again, that's, what, that's how I see these, these reflections. Verticals of that darker color coming from the the shadow on that far side. I'm using burnt sienna here Hardly any water because there's water in that in that green already so Finish off right over to the right hand side some horizontal marks, just a few. I don't want to put in too many of these little ripples. I quite like the blue of the sky. That's going to be the reflection of one of those trees, what I've just done there, and a few, just a few of these little lines. While I've got this brush, it's ideal for putting in a few horizontal 
reflections. Now these reflections, they're almost radiating, if you can imagine it, from the bottom left corner. So rather like a hand and the, these fingers extending out over to the right from the left, just, just these radiating lines, which I think would be quite a pleasing pattern, imagining them might have been something disturbing the water underneath that bush on the on the left hand side tiny bit of just a few little dark marks that bush on the right hand side I'll, I'll go back to that later on with some darker greens ultramarine blue check the edge on my brush Just drag down that those vertical reflections a tiny bit more. Not too many, and I've gone up into the shadow on the riverbank just to merge those two together even more, which I can do. The the dark shadows in the back, they're pretty much dried now. And then, then with this burnt sienna mix, that being quite damp, it's, it's sort of weakening the, the paint surface below that. So I can go in with a synthetic brush and just, as I'm doing there, just with those marks, those directions, merge in the, the paint a bit more and use my fingertips to even further get that softer edge between the two. Uh, that, that's my technique anyway. If I've taken off a little bit too much of the paint, I can go back in with some darker, thicker mix again like this, ultramarine blue. So ultramarine blue here and some of the cows. These cows, they are almost partially hidden by the tall grass and the angle of where I'm looking at from, they might even be just a little bit higher than, than where I took my, my source photo from. But if I, I think if I tried to, they're in the distance, if I tried to think of individual cow shapes, then it wouldn't work so well as just trying to think of primarily just the, the top half shape of these cows, but also these individual cows in the herd, thinking of the shape of that herd as, as one, as one as one shape, not think of individual cows and then just those darker patches of these dairy, I think the dairy cows, the, these darker patches. Up the top there, just while I've got that brush, I'll just try and soften up some of those trees. And then make that background transition just a little less harsh soften that up up a bit with my synthetic brush and a tiny bit of water in it it's picking up a little bit of the of the paint just to get a, a tiny bit just a little bit more of a softer transition a softer edge from the trees to the field A 
few more reflections. Darker, like a darker green, this is. Thin lines. I could have used uh, my soft squirrel mop brush for this, but uh, this, this synthetic brush is all right. That fly is going to stop in a minute. <laughs> it's buzzing around so much. I've just turned on some other lights just to try and attract it, the attention away from that. It's actually a lot better. You can see a bit more now. Hopefully the fly will go away. Anyway, a bit of lavender down there at the bottom. And with a cerulean blue. It's quite a nice blue, that, that combination of the cerulean and the lavender. Lavender is quite a useful colour to have in the palette. It, um, it's, good. it's quite good for skies. And also it makes for an interesting grey when you mix it with, say, a burnt umber or a burnt sienna. Quite good, maybe, if you had distant hills. Uh, that that would be a sort of 50-50 combination of that lavender. It's like a the lavender. I always think of it a bit like a. You could you could replicate it by using a bit of cerulean blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of white gouache, and a tiny bit of alloys and crimson. That would I think that would be pretty close to a lavender. Just a bit more work to those cows, but I don't want to endanger it too much. I think I've got, well, some, some of those cows in the middle look cow-like. Maybe a bit debatable for the other shapes, but it's just the impression of something going on there in the field. Which is, which is the style I'm after. Darker green now, viridian green, neutral tint and this left hand tree trunk should have said I, I left a little bit of a, a slither of light in the background trees just to help me to find a bit of light on the right hand side of this trunk and then some of the foliage coming down from that tree Again, trying to think of either looking at my source subject or my source photo and try not to go too perfect, not trying to go too symmetrical with this tree. Some little groups of leaves on the outside, maybe a little bit more dense in the middle, but then as we go to the, the outside of the, the tree, becomes a little bit more sparse, less dense. Come down over, again connecting. The foliage from this tree is on top of the background trees. I normally like using my saw brush for this, but uh, this brush works equally as well. Neutral tint, again for some darks, a few little branches. And these branches going in all sorts of different directions and crossing each other. Almost like a well, it's a, like a lost and found line. So you have these these lines of these these limbs, these these twigs. A uh, little bit of a, a twig, then then you 
miss it, then you connect, then you then you then you have the twig continuing on again. So just a a bit of lost and fern. Now the right hand tree, similar technique. It's not much water on this at all. It's, this is fairly thick. I've got to use the brush in different directions, otherwise they're going to be like upside down V's in a way with the <laughs> with the brush. Um, it's sort of the the hairs sort of splay out and you get that sort of up down upside down V shape. So which could look alright for some of the trees, but you don't want to don't overdo it replicating that repeating that shape. Some horizontal branches coming out from the main trunk. Perhaps just a, an impression of some trees on the right hand side coming into coming into view. Like on the left hand side, some of the branches are going over the background trees. Bottom left corner now and Quite, I need to be quite abstract here, yet trying to create the the darker shadow to almost like a bit of negative painting around groups of leaves. Probably a bit darker in the in the extreme bottom left corner, and then some vertical stalks of brambles or whatever it is going into connecting with the river and also I want to connect with the far side as well and I'll replicate that on the right hand side but not notice the right hand side is not a mirror it's not like a mirror image of the left hand side slightly smaller just makes it less symmetrical that way. So spring green with the neutral tint. Another, another good uh, dark green is mixing cadmium yellow or a yellow with neutral tint or a yellow, a little bit of yellow with mostly Payne's grey. That actually produces a nice dark green as well. I think some of these plants, nettles, brambles on this side might be in the shade a little bit. So they're, they're giving me a bit of contrast, those darker leaves against the lighter background of the river. I'm conscious of not overdoing it too much in that in this left hand corner and the brush is slowly running out of steam running out of water just giving a, a slightly lighter touch right hand side Spring green. I've gone over the masking tape. As I remove that masking tape, that will give me a crisp white edge. A few stalks going into the river and pointing so that the... That's another thing, that the stalks on the left, they're pointing into the middle, going, they're slanting to the right. And then the ones on the left, they're going slightly into the left. There's not much paint on this brush at all. 
just this very light touch to the surface with the side of the brush might just release a little bit of just a little bit of paint Now, at this stage, I will be using some white gouache paint. I need to make sure my brush is really clean. I do have some, <coughs> excuse me, I do have some white paint down here in the bottom right corner, you might see in the, the extreme right hand corner. And it's it's been, it's, it's had a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in with it. So it's not pure white, but good enough just to pick up on a few white patches of the cows in the field, just a few, where I just need to emphasize some of the lighter, lighter areas. I've got to be very careful not to overdo it. But I want to use this white paint mainly for some extra ripples in the water. And also just a little bit of light catching some of the stalks of the plants in the foreground. As I'm doing here, little bit of light catching maybe there could be some flower heads or something like that the the nettles are coming into flower or it might be just the the young fruit of the brambles the bramble is just just beginning to appear Check the angle of my, or check the edge on my brush. There's a, there's a very small amount of water on it and not too much. And then just with this. Now I could use a rigger brush here, try to get really thin lines. And I'm going over some of those darker areas in the, in the, uh, on the far side there. little bit of quinacrolone gold with some of that white gouache just to give it a bit of a warmer a warmer color try and connect on that right hand side just a little bit as well it's not so high that the again trying to make them not too symmetrical the ones on the on the left just a little bit higher and, and those those brush marks just trying to create a little bit of sort of energy or movement in in the direction of those marks as well on this right hand side i just feel there's that i went maybe just a little bit too dry with the brush so i need to soften up some of those edges not make them too harsh and a bit of a bit of water with the synthetic brush here. Connect again, bank to 
the background trees. Go over the go over the edge. I, I don't like these. Uh, I prefer paintings that go over the edge, and then you've got that crisp border around it, rather than a sort of circular vignette type of um, appearance to it. Bit of lavender. Just try and define that line of uh, cows just a, a little bit more. Might be going down, making a little bit of a trail for themselves down the middle of that field. There we are, I think we're done. So as I normally do, just a little bit of a, a self-critique at the end. The scene is the River Avon near Bristol. To be a little bit uh, more exact, near near Kentsham in Bristol or Salford, and a bend coming towards a bend in the river, but we're looking south south east here, and from one side to the other, trying to think about composition. These two trees, some verticals. We've got strong horizontals with the sky. The trees, the background trees, that middle field, the dark shadows at the base of the, the far bank, then the river itself, and then the foreground, trying to connect them, make them a little bit organic with the edges, thinking about the edges of the trees there. And then as they go over to the right, that, that row of trees goes a little bit further into the distance. Think about values as well not too dark with those trees i might have gone a little bit too dark at the base but on the whole i'm fairly fairly pleased with it so certainly if i don't if i don't look too close if i stand back a little bit it looks a little bit more a um, little bit more convincing and then the middle field nice fresh green grass and these these cows having a little bit of fun in that field the shadow on the bank soft with the, ref with the reflections of the water, darker, darker than the sky. That's darker than the sky, just a little bit. And then those soft reflections and a few little horizontal reflections also radiating these, these reflections around that direction. All right. Just gives a, a sort of sense of movement in that, in that direction there. And then... Get rid of that drawing. And then compared to my source photo, trying to fill in that um, this foreground, left hand side, right hand side, and connecting these plants with the with the background bank, using these two trees to connect the bank with the background, well, the sky as well, the sky and those background trees. And using various watercolour techniques. We used a, a wash, wet in wet, dropping in the shadow, the, the, the darker clouds, using dry brush marks as well, which I had a bit of fun with. I always I love using a brush and, you know, that's that stroke there, that stroke going down. Love it. Um, it's good fun doing it. It may, not, it may not look too good as a finished painting, but I enjoy doing it. And sometimes, sometimes with painting, it's just the journey that's more enjoyable than the actual end destination i certainly had a bit of fun fun doing this if you want to have a go yourself uh, on patreon those those of you on patreon i share my source image for you and you of course get an ad free and an earlier look at it if you want to um, join the patreon community a bit like a closed club much better than a Facebook group where you're bombarded with adverts and algorithms and spam and all sorts of nasty things. This is a closed, very secure um, club of like-minded watercolour enthusiasts. And every month we do projects, not necessarily this one, but 
but similar similar themes we 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 have different different themes every month and uh and live streams as well just for patreon members only so check out my patreon site the information's in the description and it will come up towards the end of this video as well but just go to patreon.com slash tim wilmot t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t love to see you in the club and Thanks so much for watching this demo. I'll catch up with you on the next one.